Hi, my name is Brian, and knowledge is power. Power gives you opportunities, including being able to get new tires on and go do your bow hunt and haul a four-wheeler in the trailer that needed tires without having to rely on the tire shop because they're busy or closed or whatever. That's what this video is about. Brian's Mobile One. I am addicted to DIY, doing it myself, and that's why we're showing you how to change tires with just tire irons and a Loki Thor compressor. That's what we're going to be using, and some soap and water, because all of these things are things I would have in camp. And I've got a lug wrench right here. Five years ago, I got two busted bald tire four wheelers for 500 bucks. Put 500 bucks into it, sold one for a thousand. I've got this one for free. Long story short, these tires are garbage. They are so old. I think that we replaced these tires in like 2000. So they're like 20 years old. Uh, got one new tire. We swapped it out there. This tire's new. This is the worst tire. So we switched it to spare position. And then we've got one more that's on here. So I'm going to use the tools that I had on hand to change and put two new tires on. These didn't come till after I got home. I was going to take them with me and with this handy tool kit and this jack and uh, the impact and then using my Loki Thor air compressor, I was going to fill up the tire and change them out um, and at least have two good tires. This one's bad. So I'm going to jump to it and see how that would have gone. Uh, my dad got one of the tires I tried doing discount and they wouldn't even touch it. They're like, oh, your tires are so bad, it's all or nothing. I'm not going to do it. We're so busy. So they turned them away. Um, being my dad, he was pissed. <laughs> so he went to Les Schwab and they took care of him. For better or worse. <laughs> so this is out of a Suburban. I got the junkyard welded a lug nut on it. Let's stick this under there. I did not get it as straight as I could have. One thing I did not bring with me is a valve stem remover, but I think I have one on the bike. You see this valve cap has a stem remover in it, so that's what I would have used. Then we're going to run over that to break the bead. How do you change a tire by hand anyway? It doesn't roll around. I agree with you. There's uh, some other kind of thing. and Now I need to worry about setting the bead. So I'm going to lift up and push down and do all kinds of stuff to get this bead to set. So we've got it set. Oh, the battery's going to die. We'll turn the pump off. We're at 9 PSI. We haven't set the bead. I'm going to swap batteries. All right, we're at 5 PSI, 5 to 7 PSI. It is 5.05. I got to go to patrol at 6, half hour from here. So <laughs> let's hope this goes. One, two, three. There it is! <laughs> Pretty impressive little compressor. We'll go ahead and take this off. We're almost done. Check out your trailer, see what it calls for on the tag. But these usually run about 50, 60 PSI. But 35 is enough to seat the bead and get you down the road with a lightweight four-wheeler. So if I wanted to, that would work just great. Throw this on the hub. This actually has wheel bolts. This is like an old trailer. Got this for free from Scott Pettis. Rents out full wheels for years and years. Had this thing sitting in the back 40. Didn't need it anymore. Said, do you want it? I'm not sure. Maybe a good trailer out of it. I drilled the hub on the back side and put in a grease cirque that allowed us to be able to grease it without having to pull the bearings out. It used to be a, like a big chore to repack bearings all the time. It worked really good. up a little bit and then these other two will go easy. We'll 
we'll put the jack down. Next one of these I build, I'm going to take more time and get that lug nut straight. So again, jack from the junkyard. Suburban gives you a big heavy duty jack. And it's got gear reduction and all that kind of stuff. I use an oil barrel all the time, but the trailer or the floor works is good. Uh, Loki Thor, this is a JA301. And uh, it's also got the, the jumper cable in. It's got a light on this end of it. So if you needed to have a light on while you're doing all the other changing, I think you can even do the inflation with the light on. Yeah. No worries. You can also jump start cars or you can charge this thing up. It's a type C and then just your regular USB. That's where this guy plugs into. Anyway, and then uh, just these tire irons. I like to use three. It makes a huge difference. These are the way to go, in my opinion. These big fat ones, you're less likely to chew up the beat of the tire. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. Let's show you the cracks on the other side of this tire. This one faced the sun. Come here, little pup. This thing's handy. All right. Let me know if you see any cracks. You know how rubber bands, you go to stretch them and they're old and they just break? Tires do the same thing. Especially if your tire's low and old, you're going to be in a, a lane change, oh crap, side of the road situation real quick. So it's better to take care of it ahead of time if you can. Thanks for tuning in and watching my videos. If you want to see more like this, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell. Bonus footage at the end. Oh, yeah. People think I use Permatex right stuff for everything. Can confirm. <laughs> All right, now who's more crazy, me for setting this stand this high or him for getting in it? That's what I was thinking as I set this thing up there. That's a long way up or down, but it makes you really blind to the deer. They won't We're see you. We're also going for spike out. This is a spike by two. I said I could be anything, so I chose to be a unicorn. This guy, it's got bad genetics because it's a three point. It should be a four point in the third year. But the other thing is that it's real spindly antlers and it could be female. We don't know. There's, you know. there's ones that have genitalia that are up inside of them that they just stay hard horned and they never shed their antlers. And then there's other ones where they have both genitalia or whatever and they never get out of velvet. They just grow and grow and grow. There's one like that that got shot here in Utah on public land this year. It was just crazy huge. And the pedestals where it comes out, it was just, it just looked like there was a volcano and just got full of all kinds of velvet. There's a forky one again. He, just, he really wants me to shoot him, but I just didn't oblige him. Whoa, what was that? That looked nice. That looked high and wide. And then you look close and it's a two by three. Again, bad genetics. This would be a great buck to take because it would taste good, but it's still early in the season and I was having fun hunting. I wanted to get my dad something if possible. Is it okay if we come over? We want to be on this side. Is that cool? I'm kind of nervous about it. I thought it was weird. I kept seeing so many animals being so skittish and getting pushed and there wasn't a lot of hunters in the area. You know why? Cougars. There's a whole bunch of cougars in this area. Giddy. Yep. <laughs>